it's so akin to the sciences that the distinction can almost be blurred because there really are ways of determining an aesthetic, of knowing what is good art and what isn't. Let me ask you a question. I use this in classes all the time. Is there anybody here that doesn't think Halle Berry is or was a beautiful woman? She is. She is. How do we know that? That's an aesthetic. That's an aesthetic. And we, can, we, we look out there and we go, wow, that's a good looking car. Well, it, that's an aesthetic. That is a value judgment and it's based on what? A set of criteria. So there is a criteria for evaluating art. It isn't all about, oh, it makes me feel good. That's nice too. And it should do that. But there's something below the surface or above the, the, the plane that governs these sorts of things. And yes, you can bend it, you can twist it, and you can, you can move around it. But ultimately, it comes right back to principles of design, elements of design, how they work together, whether they work together to create a dynamic composition. So everything I'm going to talk to you about in terms of a critique is going to have to do with composition and how those elements are used to increase the composition or in some cases weaken the composition. The strength of the composition then is built like any anything has a foundation, it has to have a foundation. And so if you want to grow as an artist, you really have to go back to those principles over and over and over and over again. Because even with all the wonderful exploration of color and line and shape and texture and all of that, if they don't hang together in a collective whole in the visual plane, um, it's not going to be the aesthetic of Halle Berry. Okay? I use that example because I think everybody can agree on that. We probably could come up with a little longer. Okay. So, uh, this is a critique session. What would you like to talk about? Who's work on, who wants to raise their hand first? Whose work wants to go? Go ahead. I have another brain. If you don't, oh, okay. you need to get that book tonight. Just get on Amazon and get the book. Betty had one strong on the right side of the brain. Everyone who's ever at my suggestion, gotten that book and actually done the exercises and get done what she lays out in that book. I've had so many people come back over the years and say, oh my gosh, I can tell the difference in my drawing just after a couple of weeks of doing the exercises. Oh. And the reason is because she's done her homework on the bicameral brain and how to exercise the right side of the brain, drawing on the right side of the brain. The point being, there's a lot of research on this now, on how this whole business functions. I remember back in the, uh, 70s when I was in school, the big excitement was about Jim King McPhee's uh, perception, uh, uh, perception delineation theory, which has to do with the fact that you're looking at something and then you have to look at what you're doing and back and forth and there's all this interaction between you and the object that you're drawing. Your brain's just a big muscle that needs exercise. So if you're frustrated about your work, the first step is to do the exercises. You're gonna have to work out. <laughs> you have to do it. And she has the best guide there is out there because she's done the hard work of putting it all together. Okay, who's next?